I hope everyone's having a great morning. If you wanna test out the chat, feel free, type in whatever you want. It could be where you are right now, what your flower looks like, what you think it is. Um, don't have to know what it is. If you aren't sure, that's cool too. We're just gonna be drawing it and later we'll be asking you to, um, on your own, learn more about your flower. Yeah. Let's see, we can also do some, oh, I love the flowers from Basil. Thank you. We have mastered emoji and wing gangs. Love it. That looks great. Awesome. So since actually, I since there's not a lot of people here right now, I'm going to unmute our guests. Girl Scout, so we can all say hello as needed. So hello, Basil. Oh, Genesis from New Jersey. Awesome. How's the weather in New Jersey? Feel free to type or, or say it. You might still be muted, Genesis, but awesome. Basil, where are you from? I am currently in Madison. Awesome, me too. Nice. Everyone else from Wisconsin or where we are in the Badgerland? Or if maybe not the Badgerland, maybe we're visiting from out of town. Hello, Stephanie, that's your first name. If not, feel free to change your name so that we can call on you as needed. Good to see you. It's Megan. Hi, Megan. <laughs> yeah, feel free to change your name. I'll try to remember Megan. I see Stephanie, so just in case. Hello, welcome to the meeting. So we actually don't have a super big group today, which is pretty awesome. Oh, Charlene from Viola. Viola, Viola. Viola. Viola, welcome. Coco, is that you? Megan, okay, I see now, great. Yeah, so we actually have um, about a dozen people on the call, which is pretty cool. So we might be able to do a little more um, show and share depending um, on the time. So I really wanna be mindful of time, but I also wanted to do fair warning if there's parents in the rooms. Uh, yesterday, we went a little bit longer than I thought, but that meeting had about 40. And I think with, um, with a smaller group, I think that might be a little more manageable in our 30 minutes. But again, just wanted to let you know if it runs a little long. We're also recording the meeting, uh, or recording the meeting so that later on, you can always refer back. Um, as we start and going through, we'll be muting attendees and unmuting you. Uh, to have our discussions. Uh, let's see, you're all changing your uh, Zoom names to your name, great, so we can call. And I just wanna make sure people, again, have your paper, your art supplies and a flower to reference, which can be a live flower or it could be a picture. And in my, um, in my PowerPoint, I will have um, some flowers. So if you happen to not have a flower, that's cool, that's okay. Um, I'll have some up there as well. Hope everyone's doing good. About 10.01, and so we'll start in about two minutes. Start in about two minutes. So if there's anything you need to do, feel free to go do it, and we'll start in just a couple. Yeah, I'd love to see if anyone is having a physical flower, or if there's anything. Anyone have like a live flower? Either they're outside or they have it. Let's see. And I'm sorry if I don't super see you right away. It's mostly because Zoom, Zoom tech, which I'm sure y'all have been having a lot of fun with during the school year. Megan, I see Megan raising her hand. Oh, I love it. Nice. Perfect. I see Coco. Nice to see you. I see. Hi, Coco. Hello, and who here just loves flowers? Who's here because they actually love, they really like flowers? Super fun to look at. All right. Okay. You're also going to meet in just a couple of minutes my Council colleague, Dave, who's running, he's gonna run the chat box. And so 
don't worry, feel free to, you know, add in your info um, or your questions or your comments, or your stories in the group chat. Dave will introduce himself in just a little bit. Um, again, just changing oh, yeah, into your Zoom thing. Go, I don't even know that girl. And I saw one of the group. I'll just mute, it, mute everyone because we're about to get started if that's cool. So I see on the call, I see Charlene, I see Trinity, I see Megan, I see Coco, I see Genesis, I see Basil, and I see, I don't know if it's Jennifer Bryant or if um, if the girls have a little of a new name. That this is awesome Elle, actually. Hi! Glad you could join us. Okay, friends, here we go. And we've got all juniors on the call. Is this correct, juniors? Thumbs up? We'll go with thumbs up if it is. Awesome. Okay. So thank you for coming. Super excited to have you. So we're going to go a little bit over our agenda today. Oh, I emoji. Oh, my goodness. You are all very more knowledgeable about Zoom than I am. I did not have to go through school in Zoom. So I'm going to be looking at you to kind of help me out here, okay? If I'm like tech not savvy, Help me out. I trust you guys to help me out. Oh, I see Basil. It's hard for you to love flowers when you're scared of bees. Totally understand. That's why we can also do flowers via picture. We're also looking that way. Okay, so welcome. We'll get a little quick introduction. We'll do a little bit of making sure we can all be seen and heard. We'll all say hello to each other and meet new friends. And then we're going to go and start our activity. And so just to be clear, we're going through step one, which is the science of flowers. And so we'll do a little bit here um, on our 30 minute call. And then um, I'll give you some uh, examples of activities to go out and do in order to fully complete that step one on your journey for the flowers bag. So if that's cool with everyone, I'm going to, um, let's see, I'm gonna, oh, I'm Katrine. I'm uh, in Madison, Wisconsin. I am the Partnerships and Volunteer Manager with the Badgerland Council. I'm gonna unmute Dave so he can introduce himself. Hi everybody, I'm Dave. I'm with the Badgerland Council and I've got my flowers. Thank you to my, because of my guest, Jean here, who used to work at the council. And I'm a lifelong Girl Scout. Awesome, good to see you. So Dave will be running that chat in the background. So again, feel free to keep putting uh, your notes back there. So I'm gonna do this again, just to confirm with all of us. Uh, thumbs up, can you hear me? Thumbs up, Zoom emoji or chat or anything. Great. Uh, can you see me? Thumbs up, thumbs up. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen with the slide? Awesome, friends. Okay, chat box. Um, if you have access to it or know how to do it, go ahead and type in something really quick. I saw Basil, Charlene, and Genesis have done it. So nice job, friends. Coco, good to see ya. And then let's just make sure, oh, that's my favorite. I love um, random typing. I do that all the time. <laughs> just to say I'm here. Okay, then I'm going to mute us all really quick. And we are going to, if I can, let me see if I can remember how to do this. Here we go. I'm gonna unmute us all. And on the count of three, we are all gonna say hello. Everyone is unmuted. One, two, three. Hello. 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 Let's say what city we're in right now on the count of three. One, two, three. Madison. Madison. <laughs> we are going to mute all and we are going to start. Um, and again, might run long, but let's see how we go with eight participants. That's pretty awesome. Okay. So moving forward, we are going to start with the promise and law. So let me go ahead and just make this a little smaller. Okay, and I will lead us. So here we go. On the Girl Scout promise, on my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Awesome, thanks friends. Okay. So you all have the ability to unmute yourselves. We're all gonna stay mute, and then when I prompt, you can go ahead and um, unmute. So, I love to go, um, 
outside. I go on the bike trails a lot. And where I have found that I've liked my um, flower viewing the most is actually on this bike trail um, out in Middleton, if you know where Middleton, Wisconsin is. And there's this bike trail that's right next to the highway. And so what I did, I found, I found it to be the place that has a great array of wildflowers that you can get up really close to and um, not feel um, like you're in a big meadow, you can really just get up and close. And so I made a little video and we'll play the video and then we're gonna play a little bit of a game to see if you can identify the flowers, okay? Here we go. Let me know if you can't hear it, but it's okay if you can't hear it, it's just music. So as long as you can see the video, that's the important thing. Oops, sorry, let me do that again. Okay, awesome. So that was just a quick walk through a place just to look at flowers. And so before we start a little bit of our game of the flowers that um, I saw in the video and that we're gonna try to guess what they are, I would love to know, go ahead and raise your hand. Um, if you, let me know a little bit of where you like to go to visit and observe flowers. So if you wanna raise your hand, I can do that. I see, let's go with basil first. Yeah, basil. Um, so I have this app called Seek, and you can take pictures of plants. And by um, taking pictures of plants, you can see like um, diff what kind of species they are. So I like go around places using the app and like seeing what kind of species of flowers, plants, animals they are. Awesome, thank you. Genesis. Um, I like to go to the River Drive Park here in Garfield because there's like a lot of plants. There's even a fall of water. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Then I see Megan. The place I like to go um, to um, look at flowers is um, a park or um, the um, around our lake, yeah. there's a lot of flowers. Awesome. Thank you. So it sounds like everyone kind of is able to get out to a park and kind of use maybe the apps on your phone or your parent's phone or guardian's phone and to really start studying not only how awesome they look and where they are, but also maybe find out a little bit more. Oh, I love it. Nice picture. So what we're going to do. I go to, the, I go to my Nana's house. Oh, great. That's great. Yeah, it's great to have access to flowers so you can um, have a little bit of adventure and not only see things that you've seen before, but also new, um, new flowers. So let's see how good, um, how good we are at quick identifying. So these are wildflowers, again, just in Wisconsin. Um, and so I would love to know, we're going to ask you to raise your hand again. I will start with this one right here. Who knows maybe what the, this flower is that I'm pointing at? Go ahead, raise your hand. Okay, Trinity, I'm gonna unmute you. What do you think this one is? The yellow with the black inside? A sunflower. Close, close. Actually, the flowers um, are drooping a little bit and sunflowers are, uh, they can be a little bit bigger, but it, they look very much close. Any other guesses? That was a good guess. See, so we got basil. A daisy? Um, it's not quite a daisy, but it looks very close to being a daisy. You know? Okay, here we go. It's actually, it's a black-eyed Susan, a yellow cone flower that is out in, um, out in Wisconsin. How about the next one? Does anyone know what this one is right here? A 
It's See, a weed. Then... It's a weed. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a lot of this. Say it again. It's Anne Lace. It's not Anne Lace. It's not Anne Lace. Close. Again, these are very close. This is really neat to understand because we're going to talk a little bit about how the smallest identifiers can change up what a species or that kind of flower is. But a good guess. You see these a lot actually up in, um, again, in the bike trails where we go down here on the state bike trails in Wisconsin, in southwestern um, Wisconsin, cow parsnip. So yeah, it's, a, it's a weed. It is a weed and it's a cow parsnip. So it's actually a type of carrot or kind of a root. What I found out was that you can actually eat cow parsnip. So I looked a little bit further into what these kind of plants are and what the uses are that maybe we didn't really know because we walk by them every day. Okay, friends. What about this yellow one right here? And this is kind of a funny one because when I looked it up, I used PlantSnap. So I know we all use different apps and different websites. So I've used PlantSnap in my phone to understand. Anyone, let's see. Yeah, sure, Basil, what do you got? Is it a yellow clover? It is close. It's very it's close. It's a snouted again. yellow flower. Oh, I'm sorry? It's a snouted <laughs> yellow flower. Very close. It's actually very related to Girl Scouts. Y'all ready for this name? I did not know this. Bird's foot trefoil. It's a bird's foot trefoil flower. So, or trefoil. So, um, yeah. And I know some of these are going to be hard because you don't have the ability to really look at it and look at it from different angles and understand what the leaves or the petals look like. Let's go with the next one. Okay. How about this one? This one right here. I think many people might know this one. I actually showed this to my brownies event yesterday and a lot of people knew what this plant was. I didn't. I learned what that was this year. I had to figure it out. Anyone know? You've seen them. They grow really tall and they're very symmetrical and they're very popular with butterflies. Anyone know? Milkweed. Yes, who said that? It is a milkweed, or as I found out, it is called also monarch yum-yums or butterfly yum-yums. Very good. And this is the most fascinating plant because it grows really small, very symmetrical. You think it's just a plant and it flowers and it really feeds the monarchs. Okay, how about this middle one here with the bee? Pink, kind of spiky. It's a clover flower. Anyone else? Close, close. Do we know? I'm gonna give you a clue. When they start to fade, they get really stuck to your clothes. It's a burr. It's very close to burr. Yeah, it's, um, let's see, it's thistle. It's thistle, and you know what's the tough one about this? Is we can't focus really, sorry, it's my picture, on the leaves, but you start to see that their leaves are quite different than the leaves of the other plants. They're more spiky, they're a little bit more sharp, if you can see it really closely. And again, we'll be sending this video out later. It'll live on the website. So you can look for, um, refer to this again later if you're wondering, uh, if you'd love to look up more. So the last I one right here. Right. How about this last picture right here? It's a yellow flower. It grows really tall. Oh, no. I learned two days ago what this flower was. I've seen it. I didn't know what it was. Anyone? All right. This one, the common mullein. So again, another plant that I um, didn't know about. I love to go out and just kind of see what flowers are out there and really have new adventures and especially look at those flowers that I haven't seen before. So yeah, so just like, oops, sorry. So just like all of you, just going through and really searching out those new, those new flowers, like we all might know what a rose looks like, right? We all might know what a carnation looks like. So what might be a cool adventure you do, and it's physically distanced, so you can do it safely, is you wear a mask and go out and you get to see these flowers that grow. I'm sure how many people here have seen gardens or front yards of their neighbors with a lot of these prairie plants. They just keep growing these prairie plants, which is really neat. Okay, awesome friends. That was our little game. So how do you find out what these flowers are? Well, let's talk a little bit about what a botanist is. So a botanist are plant biologists who work in a wide variety of settings. So some botanists, they work in offices, and they can also work in labs. 
They also work in the field, studying plants in the natural habitat. So many botanists, when you go through for this career, you will do both lab and field work because they see how it grows in nature and then they really dive deep into the plant and the flowers, right? So they might work in universities, botanical gardens, zoos, arboretums, biotech companies, pharmaceutical companies, and even more than that. Do we have any interested botanists on this call who are thinking, maybe I wanna learn more about plants when they, when they go into college or they get a little bit bigger. Here's a fun fact, you know that um, it's also what goes into making colors. Plants and flowers are also what goes into making perfume. So it's really trying to see what kind of those end uses are of our flowers. So again, what botanists do? So we have, they study pollution or climate change, how it affects plants. They use genetics to create new or improved plants. They discover new plants or find new uses for established species. They can focus on improving crops, creating new medicines, or even developing new fuels. Um, who knows here what um, plant goes into ethanol? Anyone? Let's see, ethanol. Let's call in Dave. <laughs> Let's see if he's seeing it. Oh, that's okay. So, uh, corn. And I believe there's other plants, but I believe, Dave, if you can correct me, but I believe that a plant that goes into ethanol is corn. Is that correct, that ethanol is made from corn? Yep, so even fuels, we're trying to figure out new ways to push plants even forward. So let's talk a little bit about botanical illustration, which we're really gonna try to do to, today to the best of our ability. You know, we don't have a ton of time, but we're gonna try. So botanical illustrations, the emphasis is on the science rather than the visual art. Botanical illustration is a true and lifelike representation of a plant and it should highlight a plant's features, which helps botanists to tell one plant from the other. So we had so many good guesses on these flowers, and if we had the ability to have them both in our hand, we'd be able to see those smaller details that really differentiate one flower from a different kind of flower. So I'm gonna show some um, bot botanical illustrations. In this slide, we're seeing, oops, sorry. So in this um, screen, we're seeing um, a, 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 a botanical illustrator draw plants and flowers really in their habitat, right? They put everything that is around that flower, around that plant, so that you can see what its environment looks like. But that's not what you have to do in botanical illustration. There's other abilities um, and focuses you can do. So here, we're looking at um, a scientific or a botanical illustrator who looked at the same flower in the same plant. And what they did was they looked at a plant of different stages of their life and tried to draw what it looks like so we can understand as a flower grows and you know eventually um, dies, like how it progresses through. Botanical illustrator can also do flowers like this, same exact flower, different angles, different roots, really trying to understand those really um, specific details um, that they're observing. Here, uh, the scientific illustrator really just looked at common plants that they have around, plants and flowers that they have around their house. Here's someone drawing a dandelion. We have, um, if you're looking at your herb garden, we have mint, or you can focus on basil and see how the different, um, different plants, although they are herbs and flowers and medicine plants, how they all still look very different. So again, the focus is on the different details. Here, the, um, the illustrators took one plant and then took the very different details of the plant just to really study it and see if they could draw it. So here we have not only the, the, the whole of the flower, here we have a stem leaf or just drawing the branch leaf. And I just wanna emphasize again that a lot of these are super important to see because you take all these very specific parts and you can put them together to make the whole flower. And this really helps scientists and um, botanists as they move forward in their, um, in their studies to understand every um, little detail. And then here we have someone just practicing drawing the different types of leaves and how they're shaped and how their veins look and what their stems look like and what their colors are, how they look against light, how they don't look against light. I'm really just showing you from a bigger level of looking at the whole flower 
and then really going down, 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 all the way down to maybe a small leaf or a small petal. And bota um, botanists and um, botanical illustrators all look at all these components of the flower. And really, in the end, what it starts is with drawing what you see, right? Drawing what you're observing from what you're either seeing from a picture or the flower or plant that's right in front of you. And it starts with a sketch. And you can see here, people are just, you know, I see, for example, for here, I see four petals. They drew the four petals. I see a little bit of a fold in the petals. So I'm going to draw a little fold right here. I see that there's um, a little, the inside of its circle and flat. I'm going to draw that. I see that it has a long stem. It doesn't have these um, beginning buds of, um, of the stem. It just goes straight down. Awesome. I'm going to draw that. So really looking at um, what you have in front of you and drawing what you see. So here we go. It's activity time. Uh, we are going to, uh, it's your turn. You're going to draw what you see. So this is your opportunity to have your um, piece of paper your art supplies, and your flower. I'm gonna throw up some uh, flowers as well on the screen. So if you don't have a flower, that's cool. You look at it and that's fine. And I want you to draw something that uh, a part of the flower or the whole flower, the stem, the leaf, whatever it is that you want, and really focus on drawing what you see. And, oops, sorry. So here we go. We'll have about five minutes to focus on our drawing here. I have uh, four different types of flowers if you'd like to focus on one feature or draw the whole flower. As I, uh, you can see here, I tried to include um, a little graphic on what the type uh, parts of the flower are. So we have the stem, the leaf, the flower itself, if you want to draw the whole flower, pistil, stamen, petal. Go ahead and um, take out your flower for reference and you can go ahead and start drawing. And I'll give us five minutes to, um, to do our little quick sketch. This is really how scientific illustrators start, is by doing that, that quick set sketch of drawing what they see. Let's start the timer here. I don't know if you'll hear the music, but that's okay. Awesome. And I see some notes here as you guys, uh, as uh, my friends here draw. I see, um, let's see. We have um, a scout, a, a Girl Scout who wants to be a geologist. That's awesome. I love that Basil's name is Basil and we showed Basil. Mint is pretty cool. I'm just reading some stuff from the chat. I love mint too. I do think Girl Scout cookies are yummy. That's an awesome thing. I love to like that comment. Okay. And as you draw, I'm just going to chat a little bit. Like, it's really fun to also look at flowers in different lights. So, as we look at these flowers, depending on where the sun is, depending on the season, depending on the time of day, those colors can look more or less vibrant. Um, so not only do scientific um, illustrators observe what a flower looks like at one point in time, they try to see and observe and draw what it looks like at different points in time to really get those colors right um, and also to show again different stages of the flower's life. Oh, and if people are wondering, um, I did pull these photos off um, a Wisconsin wildflower um, website. So these are all um, found in Wisconsin. Unfortunately, I did not check if they were um, indigenous and native or not. So some of these might be some of the flowers that we see out, for example, on the Wisconsin prairie um, might not be um, native. And they might be an invasive species, so sometimes that's also interesting to find out. Are they actually native to the area, or were they introduced through landscaping or um, other residents? Um, and it has since flourished around. I know one is baby's breath, so I found out that baby's breath is not native to Wisconsin's prairies, but it now grows. Oh, um, 
Hey, hold on a sec. And it now grows due to the proliferation of, of the seeds and people having them in your, um, in their garden. Okay. Yeah. So as we finish up, I think we have a little bit of time. It's about 1028. So we can take about a quick minute um, to go through and show and share if you feel like it. So if you feel like you're done and would like to just talk a little bit about your flower, uh, feel free to raise your hand and I will unmute you and you can share with the group. Yeah, I will unmute Basil. Uh, you never set the five minute timer. Oh, I saw, like it didn't play. So I think we're just gonna kind of wing it from now. <laughs> Thank you though. <laughs> Amelia, yes. Oops, sorry. This is the flower I picked. Um, I don't really know what it's called, but um, at our CSA, they have a flower field where you could pick flowers and get free flowers. And this is my drawing so far. I haven't finished it yet. But we have the leaf and then the stem. Oh, great. Can I, oh, can you put the flower up again? Sorry, I didn't catch it. Oh, nice, nice. That's great. Okay. I'm going to unmute, and I'm sorry, it's, I see Samsung, so I'm going to unmute Samsung. Sorry, I don't know your name. Is that you? Hello? Hi. Hi. There. Now you're gonna show off the stuff. Hi. Hi. Do you have your sh um your flower and your drawing to share? Um, I'll show you the one I drew. Awesome. And there's something I want to show you. Great. Awesome. Well, while you get there, I see that Genesis is ready, so I'm going to mute you for a second. Let's go with Genesis. Hello. I'm not finished coloring, but I already like, started. I started with the first one that you have. Oh, great. Yeah, I think, and people can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's a type of orchid. Love it. Okay, and I will be sure again to the video will go out and be hosted on the website. So you can all go back and look at these flowers again, and then learn more about where they are. Thank you, Genesis. Okay, Jennifer. Hi. Okay, so actually Jennifer is my mom's name. Oh, this okay. is my mom. But that's fine. Okay, so this is a flower that I was trying to draw. Really Great. Let me just. Okay. Oh my gosh. I do love your cat. Your cat's awesome. Okay. Great. Yeah, I have two cats and a dog. So this was the one I was trying to draw. And then this is the one that I drew. Oh, wow. Wonderful job. Nice. What do you like about that flower? Did you learn anything new or was there any particular part that was hard to draw? Well, not really. I just kind of looked at it. And also we have this flower over here. Oh, lovely. But I'll just draw the other one. Nice. Great job. Okay. I see basil raising. Raising your hand, here we go. Um, let me just change my background. It's really hard to see. Um, oh, wow, I love it. Did you go with um, one of the flowers on the screen, the middle one right here? Mm -hmm. Nice. That's great. Was there any part that was hard or that you really focused on of the flower? Not really. Great, thank you. 
anyone else want to share? And I totally understand five minutes or ish, five minutes ish is pretty fast for you to um, draw. So after this call, we're going to take a little bit of time when we all hang up and we go back to our own, um, back to our own lives off this call, uh, go ahead and finish your flower. And I'm going to start talking about um, next steps um, to complete this step for the badge. Okay. Is there anyone else who'd like to share? Amelia. Um, I share first when I finish my flower. Um, yeah. Oh, great. We really focused it looked like on the inside on the stamen and the and the pistols yeah. inside. That's great. Nice. And then we'll go with um, Sorry again. I'm sorry. I don't know your name. Samsung. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. Would you like to see what I wanted to show you? Sure. Is it the clover blossoms? Yeah. Awesome. Nice. They smell, they smell amazing. Uh, so what, what kind of flowers is the blue flower? Um, I looked this one up and I believe it was called a chicory. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, as you all draw, thank you for sharing everybody. And as you continue drawing, it's totally cool if you're going to hold off on sharing. Um, we're going to move on to the last slide. So um, we only have 30 minutes today. Oops, sorry. Um, this over here. So um, before we go into final thoughts, I just wanna let you know next step. So I would love you to go ahead and explore your local flowers. So I'll start with this second point here. Learn more, learn more facts about the flower that you drew or are drawing right now. And then, you know, two or three facts. Where is it native to? Um, who are its predators? What kind of environment is it, is it based in? Are there any bugs that tend to love your flower? Um, learn a little bit more about what you drew. And if you don't know, again, I'll be sending, if you get something from this PowerPoint, I'll just reiterate, I'll send this video so you can look at it again. And I want you to share with a trusted adult what you learned or share with a friend or your other troop, uh, troop members. Then take a walk around your neighborhood um, or the parks that you were talking about and count how many kinds of flowers you find. Which ones are the most common? Look at how uh, the flowers come in different colors, sizes and shapes. Use that scientific illustration eye and look at the differences between the flowers and then use apps books online research to see what you can identify and if they're native to your area so again like meeting so um so for example i had talked about this before like everybody i don't know if people know baby's breath so baby's breath is not native to Wisconsin, but you can see it in our prairies. And that's again, because of landscaping or other kinds of, you know, seeds getting out and around to our, um, to our area. So it's actually an invasive species. So those are the kinds of things that'd be awesome for you to learn. You're gonna go find a spot, look at all the flowers and see if you can find out more about them. Once you complete those two steps, then you have officially, congratulations, completed step one, the science of flowers for the flowers badge. And just wanna reiterate like you, there's other, there's four other steps for you to continue on your flowers journey. Um, and that you can find um, online on our website or you can find it um, by touching base with your troop leader and, um, and maybe your, or your parents can uh, look it up on the Girl Scouts website. But so to find out what the other steps you can do and activities to continue learning about flowers. And so as you keep drawing, we're kind of closing out here. So I'd love to hear any final thoughts from people on flowers or what you are planning to do. Yeah, Genesis. Mute you. Um, what kind of plant was the first one? I don't know the name. Yeah, you know, I, this one here, I know it's an orchid and I'm going to have to look it up later. So if, um, if you or your mom has the um, event, you know, I think what I'll do is when this recording goes up online to the website um, and we'll store our meetings uh, on a website, I'll see if I can put somewhere on there what exactly each of these flowers are. Now I know this one is milkweed and I know this one is chicory. 
and I'm blanking on these others too. They, this is an orchid, and then this is, um, oh shoot, I'm blanking. But if anybody knows, feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand and we can go ahead and, and, le and let everyone know. I am more than happy to learn from Girl Scouts as well for you to tell me what those flowers are. All right, that's cool. But Genesis, yes, I will make sure to get those flowers and what those, what these four are so we can all see. Yeah, any final, other final thoughts that you'd like to share for the good of the whole with each other? Okay, well, thank you for coming today. I'm gonna go ahead and go to that last part. Um, always feel free to come back to our website and uh, continue your Girl Scout journeys. We'll continue adding um, more events that, um, that kind of help you continue satisfying those steps towards your badge. Um, and also wanted to say like, y'all are pretty awesome, like for tuning in and doing this and uh, learning more about flowers. And um, yeah, I'm excited to um, see out there somewhere or, you know, in how way, however way you're going to do it to uh, complete step, uh, complete the step for Science of Flowers. So yeah, Amelia, we got one last part. Final thoughts. Um, my mom thought, said she thought that, um, the orange flower. She said that she thinks that was a lily because we have that type of, she says that's the type of lily we have in our yard. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That was one orchid or lily. I couldn't recall if it was one or the other. So thank you. I think I've seen that orange flower um, growing in a lot of prairie gardens. If people have seen the prairie gardens, they kind of lean. I think they lean a little bit. I could be wrong yeah. too. I need to investigate further as a science detective or as a flower detective. So. I go out on the on the bike trails a lot and just stare at these flowers trying to understand what they are. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to leave you all to it. I'm going to mute everyone so we can say goodbye. Thank you again for joining us. Looking forward to seeing you all at a future Girl Scout event. And I'll meet you all and we can all say bye-bye to each other. Have fun with your flowers. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Have a great day. Enjoy the summer. I yeah, this treat. is what I want. Oh, you were on your flower thing? Yeah, this is my whole flower. This is the part. When I go on walks with my dog, I pass this house that, and they have a bunch of flowers in their yard. They just have this one area with lots of flowers. People are doing amazing things with their yards, aren't they? Like I walk by with my dog too, around this one person who converted their entire front yard to wildflowers. And I just sit there taking pictures of all the awesome flowers that are there. Awesome. I'll see you later, Amelia. Bye. Bye. Have a great day.